Hello and welcome to this demonstration of the Philips model EL3541H tape recorder from um, the early 60s, I would say. Uh, this is going to be a bit like an unboxing video where we open all the covers in order to get the machine going. Although, of course, this machine was unboxed from its original packaging many, many years ago. Uh, the EL3541 was a, a machine that was a great success for Philips in the early 60s. I think it was introduced and in, might have been introduced as early as 1959. Um, this particular version is sometime in the early 60s, as you can see by this two-tone gray styling, gray and white styling. Case is, is gray, is light gray, the top is, is dark gray, and then, of course there's white detail and everything. It's very typically 1960, 1960 style, especially for Philips. Um, it was a fairly basic home style recorder with a few extra features. Um, basically what we have here, we have a big stop button uh, with the recording level indicator in the middle. We have play button, wind, rewind, and a pause button. And this little button here on this particular model has got two parallel lines. It's when you want to listen to the two uh, tracks of the same side of the tape at the same time. You press that after, after starting it. As I said, it's a four-track machine, which means it can record on four tracks on the tape, two tracks on each side, and you select that using the um, track selector switch here, which is around the volume control. And we also have a tone control, controls the treble, uh, a recording push button, sets it in record mode, and a microphone input recording level uh, control. And if you want to record, you can record from a microphone and a radio at the same time and mix the signals, uh, and I'm honestly not sure at this point if this is the recording level for the radio input or it's the ordinary volume control. I'm, I'm not 100% sure of that at this point. It also has, if we open this hatch here, a button here on the side which can set the machine in an amplifier position, which means it basically works as an amplifier, um, amplifying the signal that comes in and, and reproducing it in the speaker. And there's a whole range of, of uh, connections here on the side. You can connect a pair of earphones, you can connect an external loudspeaker, a radio, record player, microphone. Normally this area here is used to store the mains cord or even the microphone. This is the original microphone that comes with this machine. Uh, this, uh, this, this particular one, unfortunately, is, is, has been damaged over the years and does not work at all. Uh, a replacement element could, of course, be had, but for now, this doesn't work. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of space. I can put my, my, my hand in here quite easily. There's a big open space in here for storing accessories. And that's quite impressive, given the fact that it is tube-based technology. So we have five tubes in this machine. Uh, and we have a power transformer, a motor, all the other electronics, mechanical linkages and stuff, plus a big flywheel. It's quite impressive for being so, so small. So what we'll do here is we'll, we'll plug this in, we go, switch it on using the volume control, and in a few moments we will see that the recording level indicator will light up, which works as a pilot lamp to show that the machine is ready uh, and that it's switched on. So there we have it, we've got this classic green band, which is typical of machines of, of this era. So let's see, this tape appears to have been... there we are. We'll thread this machine uh, like this. Sorry, let's do this right the first time. Unfortunately, this is my 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 a test tape that has got a pretty short leader on it. So we'll we'll demonstrate the fast wind. Uh, for being such a small machine, it actually winds pretty well, and the drive belt's in good condition. Drive mechanism has been cleaned. The um, real clutches have been replaced with. Uh, the original polyurethane in these machines is always due for replacement as it tends to crumble and go gooey with age. Um, but the rubber parts in these machines are, unlike later Philips machines, usually in very good condition. Belts tend to stretch a bit, but they're usually serviceable. Pinch roll is okay, counter belt's okay, brake, uh, rubber parts in the brake system are okay. It's, it's quite quite amazing. Uh, so, I've got a, a microphone which is not original, and it's, it's actually not even designed for this type of machine, being a dynamic microphone. But we'll plug that in, put the machine in pause mode, record, record pause mode, and as you see, when I speak, the recording level indicator indicates that there's a signal. So we'll, we'll start the tape and make a, a recording. Now, the, the track selector is 
to the left here, which means we're making a recording on track number one. And uh, in just a short moment, we're going to wind it back and listen to it. Make a recording. Now, the, the track selector is to the left here, which means we're making a recording on track number one. So there we have it, a recording on that track. And we can record on the other track. Record, start, and we'll make a recording on track three. Now, track three uh, is the second track that's accessible on this side of the tape, which with tracks two and four being accessible on the other side of the tape. Wind that back, listen to the recording on this track. Start, and we'll make a recording on track three. Now, if I, at this point, press this button here, uh, it will replay both the tracks at the same time. Now track three uh, is the second track that's accessible on this side of the tape, which with tracks. So you can hear both both uh, both tracks at the same time. It's like a trick button. Not all versions of this machine uh, have a trick button that operates this way. On some machines, it, it disables the erase head, which or lifts the tape from the erase head, which means you can make a recording on top of an existing recording. But in this case, it plays back both tracks at the same time. There's no way to listen to one track while you're recording the other one using just the machine itself, but there is an output here called stereo where you can connect an external amplifier for playing back a recording in stereo, which means you play back one, uh, one channel using the internal amplifier and one using the external one. And in that case, I'm pretty sure you can listen to one track and record another one, and in effect, record, perform some sort of multi-tracking. As can be seen from the acceleration here, even with a full reel on the left-hand side, it accelerates very quickly, uh, indicating that the drive belts are, are in good condition, and that the clutches are in good condition, and that the machine has generally, uh, generally been overhauled. It's also a testament to the incredibly uh, sound design of this particular type of machine. The main drawback with this one, uh, I would say, is the lack of multiple tape speeds. It only plays back and records at three and three quarters inches per second which is a bit of a pity, and the way it's designed, it would be vir virtually impossible to implement some sort of speed change mechanism. A larger version of this machine, the EL3542, did have a, a three-speed, um, or had three speeds, but it's quite a bit bulkier and not really as impressive uh, a design as this one. So there we have it, the EL3541H, which I believe is from this particular machine, I think is made in 1963, the model was originally introduced around 1959 or something, and it was available for several years, and I think it's, it was a great success for Philips in its various incarnations. This particular one has got a wooden case, um, but there are versions that have a plastic case, which must really have been a first, to have a completely plastic cased machine. In that case, it's actually the, the, the uh, die-cast chassis of the machine that keeps it together with the casing just bolted on rather than the classical method of having a wooden case like this one where you sort of position the, the, the chassis inside. So we'll switch off for now and there we basically have it, the EL3541H four track tape recorder from 19... well in this case 1963. This is, was, was when this one is built. Thank you for watching and goodbye.